that was fast. Was that our 30 seconds? That was our 30 seconds. Oh, wow. That went by really fast. It did. Let's see. Hello. Are we live now? We are. You see the little eyeball there above your head? I do. I see that number climbing. That's so much fun. So we have, hello, bright eyes. Hello, hello. So <laughs> I'm Marlin. Hello, Sherry. And this is Amy. Hi, guys. How are you today? And then there's a, there's a, a, a another guest in the back. <laughs> I brought you a visitor today. I was going to introduce my husband, Brian. Hello, Brian. <laughs> what are you doing back there? <laughs> He's eating sprinkles, it seems. There's plenty to have. Yes. Probably. That's probably what he's doing. Making some sprinkles. Oh. All right. Let's 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 see. So Sherry, hello. Ashley. Hello. Hi, guys. Hi, June. Hello, Cynthia, Lori, Sherry. Hello, hello. Hello. Yeah, you want that wall? Cynthia, it's going too fast. I can't. <laughs> I couldn't get it when it's moved. I, I see Mary Jean joined us. Hello. Hi, Maxine. Hello, hello. Huh? Welcome, everybody. So, there we are. how's everyone doing? Surviving, barely, <laughs> hanging by a thread? Ah, Danielle joined us, too. Fun. Hello, everyone. Hi. So, today, something <laughs> light, less controversial. We're going to talk about cookies. <laughs> okay, I'm not going to be able to sit that way, you guys. I tried to lift, but it's not going to work. He's not comfortable. <laughs> no. to be comfortable. I feel like I'm going like to fall over. I'll find something if we do this again. <laughs> hey, Nadine. There's she another needs, Canadian. She needs, she needs a telephone book, but they don't make them anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we have some Canadians on with us, Marlon. Everybody should tell us where they're from. That's so much fun. Oh, and Tammy's Canadian, too. Oh, and that's my mom. That Laylene is my mom. She's in Florida. How that's fun. Nice. Nadine is saying hi, hubby. So wave to Nadine. I don't know if Nadine's ever met you, Brian. He's well, getting into something. In a minute, the whole wall's going to crash. Oh, yes, yeah, it's time to start doing the reno. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, he, he found you a lift. He found me some paper. One of my reams of paper. Good going, babe. <laughs> Hi guys. No, that's fine. I think that's okay, right? Zan Z Zaneville? Wow. Oh, Zaneville, Zaneville, Ohio. Hi. Hi, Michigan. Hi, Kansas. California, oh. Alabama, UK. Well, welcome everybody. This Toronto. is so much fun. Okay. Enough with the hellos. <laughs> with the cookies. You want to have some cookie therapy now? We're going to have some cookie therapy. Hello, hello, everybody. So I'm going to start since you started last week. Okay, that sounds great. So I'm Marlene, and this is Amy. And yeah, we're, well, I think she's, I don't know if I'd say she's more, but we're addicted to cookie decorating, I could <laughs> say. Definitely, definitely. <laughs> So um, I teach uh, cookie decorating. I started on YouTube, but I now have this cookie school. If you're interested, a whole bunch of tutorials on there. You, those are some Valentine's Day projects. And recently I started uh, offering on Global Belly. Haniela and Sweet Ams also do that. And so I started, this is a new thing. So those are two kits that are available on Global Belly. So it's so Global Marlin Belly. When they get those kits, do they get everything like cookies, transfer sheets? What's in those? They get uh, the cutters, the food color, the instructions, the royal transfer sheets. Wow. A different kit. So like the locket has gold and, you know, like whatever you need for that particular project. So there's wow. a different projects to pick. Those from. are beautiful. I tried to design it with uh, beginners in mind because if you're ordering supplies like that, it's like beginner projects. Usually you have the gear, right? If you're more yes. already into it. And I love that you can get things that way because shipping makes it so ridiculous to try new products, right? When you have to order from five or six different companies right away. Yeah, it is very pricey, the shipping. I mean, maybe they'll look, get it down eventually, but anyway. I don't know. It, 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 and that, that's going to be the major thing. So today, um, 
I have this video that's actually been quite popular on uh, YouTube. And that's my beginner here. Let me put the link to it in the comments here. So this video there, this video has um, everything kind of that you, if you're a beginner, mm -hmm. I address all kinds of great stuff in that. And so that if you haven't ever made cookies, that's a great beginner video. And today we're using this cutter. So another thing that- that's So cute. <laughs> you know, you, you wanna buy all the cookie cutters, but sometimes you know we're on a budget and we have to be reasonable <laughs> and so this is a popular christmas cutter the sweater ugly sweater ugly sweaters are so popular mm -hmm. <laughs> they are yeah so today i'm using my ugly sweater for valentine's day and I, I here let's add my hands should i you do this there and so here's the here's the um, the cookie. So the reason I showed that wet on wet image, so it's basically the same techniques as this video on this cookie. So wet on wet icing is that when you're working, you're working with wet icing and dropping the two colors in at once and you get this kind of like flat. I'm gonna try to zoom in here, can I? And you can see here, the icing is super flat. Nice. And so that's what wet on wet icing kind of, whoops, too zoomed. <laughs> that's a great cookie to add into Valentine sets. Well, I like it, the size. You see, it's not so, so big. Mm -hmm. And it's one of those that really transitions from holiday to holiday. And if let's say your kid likes right. like a character, you could put a character on the shirt. You could do all kinds mm -hmm. of things. That. You can make a St. Patrick's Day, kiss kiss me, I'm Irish. Yes. You can do a lot of stuff with us. We're going to need to see that one next month. Yes, maybe I will, but it's good, <laughs> you know? What did you make last night? Did you make uh, you make the Valentine's Day ones? What um what did I make? No, she the uh, bright eyes here is saying she made uh, cookies. I'm guessing she made oh. the whole And I'm, I'm watching the feed, so when you start decorating, I'll relay the questions. Oh, thank you. So, so you okay. can concentrate. I don't see any just yet, though. So this is uh, the, the kind of, I did the arms before just because I wanted them to be dry, but I'll just play it here. So I like to add a guideline. Um, it just helps if, if you're not a super artist to kind of know where to position your icing right so just helpful you don't have to do it but it takes the guesswork out of where you should pipe and so this is flood consistency icing and i'm just quickly flooding uh the arms i do like a two color like a sweatshirt you know like those sweatshirts with a colored arm and a white middle depending right. on what you're doing but i find it like gives it a bit of a contrast you know mm -hmm. Bright Eyes is saying she made your hearts. She made those hearts. She made those hearts. Mm -hmm. So I thought I'd just quickly, since we're talking about wet on wet, I thought I'd talk, like, just show the icing. Before. I don't have it in the piping bag, but I just want to show it. So icing, wet on wet icing needs to heal. What does that mean? Well, it means self-level. And so when you have your icing and you stop touching it, you need it to smooth over. Now you add your water a bit at a time because the line between having icing that's, you know, the right consistency and then too watery is, is pretty fast. Like you, you cross over to too runny quickly. And if your icing is so watery, then it just falls right off the cookie and dries super flat on your surface. You want to have an icing that here you can see, see it's a little bit raised up. If you are varnishing your cookies, well, you're just going to have like this super flat, not very textured surface. Marlon, where is that little spatula from? That looks like it would be super handy for doing um, icing stenciling. Oh my God, I get asked about this thing so much. So Miri of Shep Shepix Cookies came to my house and visited me and and she brought me a package of these i've never i've googled i've searched i've looked on aliexpress i've looked everywhere oh. I'm able to find these but i get asked all the time about this particular spatula 
So yeah, so that you want an icing and usually how it reacts in the bowl. So if you just give it a, a shake in the bowl there, you see it's gonna heal over. Well, that's what it should do on your cookie. So you wanna have icing that self levels. So you don't you do, have you do have a question over in the feed from Kelly Hicks. She made the um, Hanalea's cookies and icing recipe with orange oil and orange zest this weekend. Cookies were amazing tasting, but the icing set up too fast for my beginner time frame. Would I have done better to have left out the cream of tartar in the icing recipe? I don't use cream of tartar. I don't know if that is your, like, are you heating your house right now? Are you using a lot of heat? Like, are you, you know what I mean? Like, because right. it's winter and if you're heating your home and it's dry, that can actually really amp up drying time. Right. Pulls the moisture out super fast. Yes, exactly. And if you need a runnier icing, well, then maybe you should outline and mm -hmm. then you can work with a runnier icing because that border will stop the icing from falling off. Right. For the okay. fill. So guys, if they don't do this trick, do you do this trick, Marlon? Can you see the, in my cookie frame, the little oh, yes. squirt bottle? I use, I, everybody, I yeah, use that. I use actually a bottle with a piping tip on it. That's what I use. Probably just a little, a little bit more liquid would have given you more drying time. Yeah. And, um, I mean, the, the, watch that video, the wet on wet video that I showed before the heart one, because right. that I show how to do a border and it, it can be helpful to have a border if you're working with icing that is um, a little bit too runny. So you need, because if your icing is like, I, I'll, I'll compare it to pudding. That's the, the thing right. I said, if you dump a container of pudding on the middle of your table while well, the pudding will stay in a blob. But right. if you have a glass of water spill, what's going to go on the floor? So yeah, yeah everywhere. Thing, right? Uh, and Jen from Emily Mays is on with us. And she is saying that um, those spatulas are the best. She thinks they came, some of them came in swag bags a few years ago at Cookie Con. Oh. So I'll do some research and see if I can track those down. Because that looks super handy. Because I have looked for them. But, I mean, people ask all the time mm -hmm. about them. And, right. um... Yeah, I don't know. She got, she brought them literally from Mexico. She lives in Mexico City. Ah. Oh. Brought them from Mexico. Okay. And so here I have my piping bag in a cup, and that's just to help to put it in there. You can hold it in your hand, but this way it kind of like makes it just that much easier to get the icing in there. And you see, you can kind of rub your spatula against the rim of the glass. Yes. So it just makes it a little bit easier to fill your, your piping bag. And if you have several to fill, you can work a little bit faster. Do you use all the same size piping bags or do you... Um you know, do you carry a couple sizes and use different things? I do have a few sizes, but because I'm often just working on a few cookies, because it's like for videos, I don't have to make a lot of cookies. Right. I don't need a lot of icing. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I tend to stick with that, um, that smaller size, even if I'm making a bunch of cookies, just because it's a little hard on my hand to hold the weight. Agreed. So now I've just knotted the end to stop the icing from drying, you know? Nice. And Jeremy has joined us, so the shenanigans may proceed. <laughs> well, hello. <laughs> so when you're planning your cookies here, okay, I wanted to do like a knit type thing on the arms. But if you're making 12 cookies for your friends and you right. want to do something fun, go for it. Do the knit. If you're making 100 cookies, don't do that. Right. Okay, you have to think about how many cookies you need. And how, you know, you have to be reasonable. If you're making a lot, a lot, a lot of cookies and short on time, you have to sometimes edit your thing. So here I just did wiggly lines instead of doing a knit design. I love it. That's a great way to do them fast, right? Well, it's just, you have to be practical. Sometimes you have big dreams. Yes. But, you know, we have to be realistic as well. And you know, I love that you worked in a sprinkle on this cookie too. Well, the thing is we buy them. I buy them all. I see them. They're so cute. And then you don't end up using them. I do like, like on my Christmas ones, I'll add a little star, a little thing. So for the, for the cuff and like the kind of elastic-y parts, 
I like to do a little mm -hmm. bit of a zigzag. This is a thicker icing. So icing needs to be thicker to hold. And we have a question about what size tip you're using. Well, this is a three. So this here is a thicker icing. And this is a three to see, it kind of looks like the elastic there. And I like to add that before I do the, um, the fill here so that it kind of hides it a little bit at the right. top. And you can use a star tip too for that to make it look a little bit more um, like uh, knit. You know, I like the star right. tip for, for knitting. For Somebody knit. sent you super sticker. I don't know what that means, but I'm sure you do. Oh, thank you very much. That's that's cold hard cash. That's what that <laughs> Thank you very much. So here I'm I'm going to start. I've got nothing but the arms on just so that when I start and end, I can tuck the ugliness because right. the beginning and the end are a little bit, you know, not as pretty. And this is a bigger tip than I would, I think, use, but I just wanted you guys to be able to see it. So this is a two, but I would use a 1.5. I use PME piping tips. They're the only brand that make 1.5 size. Wonderful. You do have another question too. Somebody is saying that they, um, they, after they ice their cookies and the icing dried, the cookie was very soft. Is that normal? That, it, that right. the icing softened it? So what happens is there's water in your icing. Your cookie is basically drinking that icing. It's absorbing right. it like a sponge. And so if that's a, you know, some people will bake their cookies a little bit more to get them a little bit crunchier, but that's that's part of it. You can use right. a, a fan to dry them faster to get the, the icing to evaporate into the air as opposed to be leaching into your cookie. Amy, answer, you have your bakery. What do you do with regards to this particular dilemma? Well, we, we don't bake. Um, oh them very hard, but they're not soft either. But I always have to take into consideration what the shape of the cookie is, because I find that tends to lead to the strength or weakness of the cookie as well. But the thing I really have to be conscious of is that I know that the flavoring that's in my icing is also going to leach into the cookie when it begins to pull that moisture. Anything you've added that's liquid in that icing, right, is, has the possibility to transfer to the cookie. Mm -hmm. So I, I did have to experiment for a while when I first started to make sure that I did not have too much flavoring, because just like you can have not enough of something, you can have too much of something. So you don't want, once those things start melding together, you don't want to have something that's really overbearing on the um, flavor palette. So that that's another consideration that ended up being more of the transfer. That's how I really actually learned about the moisture and the flavor transferring was because of that in a bad experiment. <laughs> that when the experiment, get, the customer tells you about it, it's not good. Yeah. Right. yeah so it, no, it was my husband. That was worse. I heard about it for weeks. Oh <laughs> so the dehydrator, I see Sherry's asking, I, I do use a dehydrator for the icing, but that can also, um, impact your cookie and so if you like a, a, a moist or chewy cookie it could dry out your cookie right what it's do you leave your set on i i use one too i have a um little sasori that's like an eight or nine tray sasori just to i use it just to give it that sheen so i can move faster yeah but um i never have mine higher than 105 to 109 what do you do do normally i, I don't even know what it is but it's the lowest setting okay i think this one actually um goes down to maybe 90. Let me see while you're doing that. I'll tell you. I think this one might go down to 90 even, but um, I usually leave it at 105. Of course, it's not going to work now because I'm trying to tell you. Yeah, mine is really a cheap model. Like it's, I, I paid it, I think $40. It was not anything fancy. Oh, hi, Han. Yeah, this goes down. Hey, Han. This goes down to 95. So it's really just like a cool breeze blowing on it, right? Cool breeze, yeah, exactly. So, but I do find it helps a lot if you're going to be doing um, multi level in your texturing on a cookie. You well, know, if just you want to move on to the next, to the next step. Right. right. And we'll wear my sweater. She likes pink. She looks nice and pink. Yes. So and that sweater's super cute. 
Now I'm doing the cuffs on the little um, the sleeves. And you can see it's it's much less than the knit. If you look up a knit, like kind of decorated cookie, but it was done so much quicker, so much quicker. So like I say, you know, you, you have to, you don't want to be like hating the process. You right. want to be happy at the end of it. Yes. You want to feel good. You don't want to be sore and have like, you know, and, and be cursing and be up till three in the morning. Should right. be present. You're trying and to- you barely touched your scribe while you were doing that cookie. So that was pretty fast right there. Yes. Well, that's it. And you have a lot of texture on the cookie. So there, there are ways if you plan ahead to get a lot of bang for your buck in the visual part of your cookie, if you need to go fast. Exactly. And, and you're trying to do something nice. If you're making cookies for your friends and family, you shouldn't at the end of it be, uh, you know, cursing at the process. Right. And, and you do, um, how many cookies do you think that you projects do you work on a week? Like, do you keep multiple things going? Cause yeah. you have so many feeds going. I usually am, I'm in the process of like at least five, okay. like different steps. Like one might be in design. Mm -hmm. One might be in the Royal icing transfer stage. You know, one might be getting edited. There's always like a, like, plates being juggled and you have to be constantly doing research and product testing and different things. Right. Do you have a burnout point? Like if there's too many things on your desk, you just can't think. Well, the thing that discourages me is the editing part. I have to say mm, the tech part, huh? Yeah. It's a bit depressing. So now I've got my white icing and I'm filling in the shirt. So you're just now that you've got all your kind of like, stiff icing on tucked away see it's hidden inside the shirt mm -hmm. there the beginning and the ends of my icing so i can come in now and fill all the front my tip is too small here i've cut my bag too small and marlon while you're adjusting that bright eyes is asking if you use corn syrup in your royal icing do you I, use that i do not add corn syrup to the icing i i i do you do i have my mm -hmm. icing it's very simple yeah, it's I do add, I don't add very much bright eyes, but I do add it for the very reason you're saying, just to give it a little bit of a softer bite. Um, and June is asking, um, I struggle with narrowing down what to make so many ideas. I think that's true. But um, June, do you find, because June, you, you actually sell cookies. Um, do you find that once you start making them, that you see what takes longer and what takes less time and then just get a good balance before you go forward. Are you talking to me or June? No, June, just to see how she narrows down. I usually actually make a full run of everything because some things seem great when you do them the first time, but then when you actually start to make a bunch of them, you're like, no, this is too long. I'm having to touch the cookie too many times. It's well, especially if you're, if you're doing cookies yeah. for me, you're, if this is your business and you right. need to be making money because every time you're handling and doing and that right. you're losing money because you're not doing something else that makes money. So you need to do everything you do it has to be to the max efficiency, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. I find that too. And then the other thing I've had struggled with at first when I first started making cookies was I would, I would have everything planned and then I would see something else. And then I'd be like, Oh, let me switch. But then by then packaging is on its way in your gift tags are probably oh. either ordered or made. So the other thing I learned to do was just stick with my original gut instincts on things and move forward in that direction, not change midstream. Well, yeah, that's like, you have to, uh, like fo focus, focus. Yes. And Pauline is asking, she says, I'm new to this. And I am wondering, would it be better to decorate from the middle? I'm afraid I might smudge the icing if I decorate the middle last. What are your thoughts? I understand what she's saying. The thing is, is your icing, if you're working in a wet on wet icing or your flood icing, which is the runny icing, well, even if you stick your hand in it, it will heal. You can fiddle with it to get it to um, smooth over. So right now I'm forming hearts. So I had to add little dots of icing. And you see, because it's it's wet, I can come in here with my needle. And this is called a, a boo-boo stick. And, and I'm just pulling the white into the pink and pulling the pink down. And it forms 
these tiny hearts and I'm wiping it between drags so that I don't pull the pink too far and the white too far into the areas that I don't want. And then I'm shaking it to get it to, um, to smooth. So the agitation helps with regards to the moving process. And look how beautiful they look. So South Africa has just joined us. Welcome. Oh, hello. Hello. And now at the top, I'm going to add my um, little like turtleneck area. I could have maybe added some more hearts, but I, I was again trying to stay with three rows of hearts. Just to, you have to kind of, like you say, commit to the design. And then just because if you're thinking multiple cookies. Right. So now I'm just doing, I'm going around. I'm not just doing a flat because I want it to be a little bit more up. So I'm actually going in a circular motion, creating a line of icing under. You see, and it kind of raises it. And oh, it I like that. A little bit more volume and like for the for the turtleneck area to look a little bit fuller. And then in the wet icing, I'm sticking my sprinkle in there. Um, Allison, you can make hearts both ways. Both You can drag straight through from top to bottom. But you see the hearts on Marlin's sweater, how it's a cleaner heart and it doesn't move from the from one heart into the next heart. So that's how she created those. So they have a cleaner break between each heart. Yeah, it's it's I didn't want it to be like, hold on, let's just it's in the Get picture. picture. Yeah, where is it? It's this one here. See, so that was a full <laughs> pull right from one to the other, you know. So Jeremy is starting a drinking game. Every time you say um a boot or boo-boo stick, he's taking a drink. <laughs> so you must be I don't say a boot. <laughs> so you must be you must be home with kids today, right? <laughs> so um, I'll do one more. Okay. I'll do one more. Here, I just gonna quickly show. I just wanted to show the um, the one of the cookies that I posted in the cookie school group this month. I love that one. You see, this is mm -hmm. this is like the next step. You can get this just flat icing here is coated with sand and sugar, and then here's just a few lines, just like the sleeves just with a star tip and you're right. putting them a little bit more strategically, but you know, and that's, that's a different color sugar than most people can get just in the store. Right. Didn't you say that was raspberry colored sugar from CK? Uh, I don't know. I guess it depends on the store you go at, you know, like mm -hmm. I'm guessing some people might carry it. It's very pretty. That's raspberry though, right? Raspberry from CK. Right here, I'm looking at it right now. It says raspberry on oh, the It's bottle. beautiful. It's a beautiful shade. I'll do another one and I'll try a different design on this particular one. So again, we'll do the zigzag on the um, cups. And Jeremy is <laughs> saying that is gorgeous. The heart? I, mm -hmm. I mean, it's That one is surprisingly simple. I don't want to seem like, oh, it's so easy, but I just mean from a design standpoint, mm -hmm. you know, like production, right. it's surprisingly like not too, too bad. And now again, I'm just going to talk this one through. So I'm, you see here, there's a, it's, it's a round tip. So when the icing comes out, it Can you drop down just a little drop you, the cookie. We can't see. Oh, I top. thought I was in, oh, it's the wrong sleeve. There we go. I, I put the sleeve in frame, but I'm working on the wrong one. <laughs> okay, so so the round at the end, it's it's a circle. So when the icing comes out, you're making spaghetti. So you want your spaghetti to form, but if you're really like close to the cookie and you're you know wiggling, your spaghetti is gonna look like a rigatoni. Right. <laughs> you want it to form the spaghetti and let the spaghetti hold its shape. So I let the icing fall and that way my icing maintains the spaghetti shape. And then here in the middle, I'm going to do my wiggly line and you can make the wiggle bigger or, you know, right. That's but beautiful. It, but it's pretty simple to do. You see, it's basically, I'm just rocking my hand mm -hmm. and it's not any longer than a straight line. And look, you went right from that into your cuff there. That's yeah. perfect. So we'll that's, do the other one times. So more spaghetti. 
Um, Maria is asking a question. I came across a recipe for soft royal icing. Are you familiar with that? Well, I would imagine that's glaze. Probably. So it's not royal icing because ro royal icing is concrete. There is no soft royal right. icing. And royal icing, uh, the glaze, they can't do a lot of the things. So they often will do the decorations in royal icing. Right. So I understand that royal icing is not everybody's cup of tea to eat. Mm -hmm. But um, you're you know not... The corn syrup does really help with that, though, if you have somebody that just really wants a softer bite on that icing. Yeah. Um, well, I, I make four pounds at a time, and just even including just two tablespoons makes a huge difference. So when it dries, like, let's say a week, is it still a little bit softer? Does it mm -hmm. finally become... Yeah, I heat seal mine after they've had 18 hours minimum to dry. I heat seal everything. And, and, and even a week later, two weeks later, it's still soft. The cookie's still soft. The icing's soft. Um, soft soft in that it won't break your teeth, not soft that you can't bag it. Does that make sense? Yes. Hope so. Um, Jeremy is saying he went into Lowe's the other day and he saw one of the mechanics benches like in your background there and he instantly thought of you. <laughs> He, thought, he said it was weird thinking about Marlon in Lowe's. He sent me a picture, actually. It, oh, that's funny. That's funny. I have a um, I have a similar cabinet. I have the Husky version from Lowe's. Um, be, and I got it specifically because I'm very space challenged in my little kitchen. My kitchen's only um, where I do all this baking is really only 12 feet by 10 feet. And then I have a separate dish pit area, which is even more challenging because that's a smaller area. I don't think so, I'll be in a dish pit. Is that yeah. you uh, well, we have the big, we have to have this really big triple sink oh, to and then a special like grease trap thing and air gap and all that stuff. So we put all of that into a separate room. So it was a, you know, there's a wall and a door separating us from where we actually bake and all of that. So, so that's but I had to get one of those cabinets because um, I had to, it was, perfect for storage it held my gels upright all of my um all all the little things of gel that i have and all that i could get all that organized i could not stand digging through boxes so um for the cupcakes the sprinkles all of that those cabinets are so handy and then up in that top section um i have the piece that goes on the top do you have that hood yeah um i have that raised up and propped up to where it can't come closed and i have um baking sheets oh. up right in there um, because I ran out of room for that and cake pans and all of that. So I had to find a way to get everything super organized. Cool. It doesn't do you any good to own it if you cannot use Access. it, right? If you can't find it. So here, let's try something a little bit different. I saw this. So you can look at actual shirt designs for your ideas. Oh, cute. So you can just have an actual heart there and then we can do. Oh, I love it. I like the squiggle that you did in the middle. So you never broke the line. And then you can kind of pull these little ones and make little, this thing is not good for making the hearts. The boo-boo stick is a little thick. Well, it's a, it, it's not giving me the definition that I want. I really just wanted to say it to mess with Jeremy. <laughs> See, now my heart here, like oh. it, it, it's kind of being like it's impeding like the other heart, but I'm not going to pull down too much into the, I don't want to mess the line here. I have a little air bubble. But yeah, so this is so like... Cute. <laughs> So I'm stabbing the cookie so that I don't have to pick it up. And then I'm going to just come in here and heal where I stabbed it. So everybody's probably interested to know how often do you literally put your hand in icing when you pick it up to shake? Well, <laughs> do I, you do that as much as we do? Of course. I, I, I mean, that's why I try not to do it. Like I do the stabbing. Right. So now back to the, the collar. I tried also to do, um, you could do love on it, you know, like a cursive love. Mm -hmm, that would be so pretty. But I'm working upside down, actually. So it's kind of hard to write. Well, the cookie is upside down for me. 
Right. So then for the for the neck, I'm trying to get two levels of icing at once. I know that sound. Thank you. Well, oh, is that money? Was that oh, stars? Yes, that's stars, I think. Thank Fun. you. Um, yeah, so that I'm doing a, a circular motion. So I'm creating icing at the bottom and create like coming back over it. Let me let me show you. So here I'm going around the constant motion. This is so that my neck area here, the turtleneck area, is higher so that it's not so flat. It's supposed to be like a, you know, like a turtleneck is like two layers of fabric, right? It's yes. over itself. It actually looks like that too. What would you say that consistency of icing is to make it to be able to do that and not um, heal into itself? That's, oh, sprinkle down. <laughs> Um, <laughs> okay, well, it's not an exploding bag, but it was a slippery sucker. It just went flying. <laughs> I'd say it's probably, what do they call it, soft peak? Would that work, you think? Probably. Is You think it's just a little bit less than toothpaste consistency? Yeah, it's a, it's probably about that. So you might need to adjust depending, you know, mm -hmm. because you need the line to, well, you don't need to, but it's ideal. You want the line to hold, right? You mm -hmm. want it to stay like that. So here are the two versions. That's beautiful. So and you can see here, this is a two, this piping tip is a two, and this is a 1.5. Oh, I think, wow. Well, I, I like the 1.5 because it's a small, like the sleeve isn't big, but I just didn't find it was that visible. This way you can see with the two on the video, you know, for you guys. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You can tell, though, even in this in this frame, you can tell it's a slight difference. Yeah, there is, wow. a, there is a size difference. It's beautiful. So where are we at? Our, all right. So I'm I'm done, Amy. Okay. Let me. Sw I'm gonna switch my cameras. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll Here. swap the views real quick while you're doing that. Okay. Yeah. I have. There's a, a couple questions in there, but you were talking, and yeah. I didn't. I didn't want to keep throwing them at you. So if you scroll back a little bit, there's a few questions in there. All right. So let's see here, Marcos, you have a question. Uh, did you not type it yet? Let's see. Hi, Sherry. How's that look? Is that going to be okay? Get in. I'll get in there for you for when we start. Amber said she has a design binder. <sighs> I don't know what what he's saying. I, I I don't. I didn't see what was before that. Jeremy, tell us tell us what that was in response to. I know he's drinking because we said boo boo stick. I'm gonna have to pull one out now, Marlon, just so you can say it every once in a while. All right, <laughs> I'll put one in frame there. Okay, <laughs> that is really the technical name of this, guys. Isn't could the Cookie World great? We have all these fun names. So that's a boo boo stick, and then I use a thingamajini. They're great because you have at your fingertips a little shovel to do repairs. Right. And then you have the needle to do the adjustments. It's really very well designed. Right. And this, and if you have to take something off or you need that little chiseled bit to it, that's fabulous, right? Exactly. exactly. Well, should I should I jump in? Yes, you can uh you can so that we can hello Lisa. Hey Lisa. Just before Amy starts, I want to re repeat uh, I don't think I said it actually. This will be saved so you can rewatch it if you missed a part of the video. You can just go back to it and uh, it'll be available on Facebook and you can you can watch it. Can they share it now while we're live too? Marlon, does that work? Is that a a yeah. thing they have? So you guys share the video, maybe we'll get a few new people attracted to the art of cookie decorating today. So that's, that's Amy's project. Let's, let's yeah. I'm going to show you how to do this cool technique. Um, so I found this because um, I think most, I think if you watched last week, you know, I have a small boutique bakery. So we make custom cupcakes. We make custom cakes, all kinds of goodies like that. Um, my background started in, and that was us this summer, you guys, when we were going through everything and we couldn't have anybody inside our little downtown area. Is so fabulous that they um, put in those parklets so we could have outside dining and still meet all of the restrictions. So they're super helpful around here. 
And then that was our Christmas window. We love decorating for all the holidays. So maybe I'll do a Valentine window. I confess I'm a little bit behind. I've held on to Christmas as long as possible. <laughs> but that's our storefront. And that is the um, bottom of the hill of our street looking towards Main Street. We're on Davis Street. So that's our little historic town. And that's my cute hubby who goes through everything with me. He, what, um, he, what he's town is it? What, it's what, called Pepper, Virginia. Pepper, Virginia. Called Pepper. Mm -hmm. Pepper. Yep. Yeah, so and we're then, the, and uh, then here, 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 here. Look at this guy. <laughs> that's Jeremy. That is your goal. Show this to your wife. It helps so much. That's just one of my cookie cutter walls. Now I have to tell you, one of the things I learned from Marlon is trying to just keep reusing cutters that you already have because that happens if you don't. You see something new, right? And you want to try it. So you jump into another set of cookies. But um, I think after two years of having cookies where we offer them professionally for sale in the store that I really, I have a nice set now and I like to Franken cookie a lot. So I have a nice set and I don't buy maybe as many now as what I have previously. Um, and then I also resell some of the ones that I have that I found I didn't use that much. They just weren't something I could do in the shop. But, you know, there's always a couple things rolling around here. So I'm going to jump in on this cookie real quick. And I think I think we have something in there with my website. Um, if anybody's interesting, is, is it OK if I tell them about my Valentine class? And the, is, it, is it this one? Um, yes. Yeah, so we sell DIY cookie kits, which you can see there, but our website's at the bottom. It's seriously sweet cupcakes.com. And I do have a Royal icing transfer class up for sale where you get 24 Royal icing transfer designs that I did. You'll get links to the suppliers on how to um, prepare those so that you can use them because people really like fancy cookies, but as cookiers, you know, Valentine is like maybe the number one holiday for cookies, maybe even bigger for Christmas, uh, bigger than Christmas for some folks. So you need to have a way to, to do that that a lot, of, a lot of things done ahead of time so that it doesn't become a two and three o'clock in the morning. So in that class, I'm going to teach you how to make um, gnomes and uh, different candy things, but things that are super fancy that can be done way ahead of time and then added to a cookie. So just some, some fun things like that. But I do have that up online. People were asking last week if I had anything they could take if they weren't local. I do have that up. And then I also have DIY cookie kits for adults and kids online right now. And if you're local, I've got a lot of the Valentine items up already. So that's on there if you guys want to take a look. But I want to show you this fun technique. And this actually for me, um, can you see that okay? I'm going to take off the picture here. Okay. Did you, you see? Go. Did you see the gnome cupcakes that were in that picture? Gnomes are still so hot this year. We we do all of that kind of stuff. But can you guys see how this looks like it's embossed? Where it looks like you know, like a Notary Republic seal when they scrunch it. How it makes that design, you know. So this, I actually came up with the idea of how to do this. I haven't really seen this in particular done anywhere before, but I came up with it because I used to. I, well, I still do, but right now, due to COVID, they're smaller. We make a lot of um, frozen themed cakes, you know, the movie. So uh, one of the techniques that I use is I make really thick fondant snowflake cutouts, and then I slightly chill my purpley blue icing on the cake. And then I would take those fondant snowflakes, and instead of just attaching them so that they were raised above the icing, I would actually get that icing to just a perfect temperature to keep working those fondant pieces down into the buttercream so that I got this texture instead of all of that fondant on top of your cake. So, and then in, um, I take some classes from Cameo at CR Confections and she followed the cookier that you told me about, Marlon. Mm -hmm. she, is, was it Pam? Yeah. So where, where they use, crazy. Yeah, where they use glaze icing and they use texture mats. So I actually learned that technique from Cameo. Um, but I wanted to create something like those two things, like from the cake world and from the glaze world on a royal icing cookie. So that's what I'm going to show you guys how to do today. You are by no means limited to only doing a design like this, but hopefully this will get you kickstarted 
into some other ideas and some new things will come out of it because, you know, we all love the art of cooking. So if you do come up with something, make sure you guys tag us. We'd love to see what you're working on, but I'm going to do at least one mitten for you because we're at quarter till. So I'm going to go kind of fast. Okay. Um, but you can watch this replay and then um, there's also going to be an online class in, with a Valentine, a similar Valentine thing. I'll have an online class to teach this. So let me get started with this. So these are just basic paper crafting. Um, what are these called, Marlon? Punches, right? Yeah. Punches. Okay, so sure. these yeah. have never actually been used for crafting. I purchased them specifically to create this project for my local cookie rookie group. So when I got them just to be safe, because, you know, I'm, they were going to eat the cookies. These have actually been sanitized just like I would sanitize something before I use it in the production of making cookies. So you have to do these well ahead of time because obviously they have a lot of crevices and whatnot. You need to get this thoroughly dry. Um, so I actually sanitized these about a week ahead of time and made sure and had them under a fan just to make sure that they would not have any water in there that could come out and damage the wafer paper. And I'm just using basic wafer paper. I already have a whole bunch of these punched. So I'm just going to show do a few for you so you can see what it looks like. But the, see how easy that is? And it's out, right? So I just made a whole bunch of different sizes because I wanted it to look, look how easy that is in the wafer paper, you guys. And wafer paper is really not expensive. Uh... No, I got a huge pack, a huge pack, you guys, for like $6 on Amazon and... Um, in another cookie group I'm in, somebody said they ordered in wafer paper and when it came in, it was almost clear. So that would work even better if you want to work in a different color scheme. And I'll show you why. So we'll start right now with the, we're going to do this part of the cookie first, because this is a cookie, believe it or not, you can actually do really fast because, um, uh, we don't have to wait for this to, to set up to move to the next phase, right? So let's start here. And we're just going to do a basic outline and flood. Can you guys see that okay in mind frame? So okay. let me, you so, don't have to feel rushed. If you, like the, 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 the hour that I used to, like, a, you know, the suggestion, if we go over, it's fine. Okay, okay. Fine. It, so it, don't talk so fast. They feel like I'm from New York. They can know that I'm from VA. I just, I don't want you to feel rushed. We're supposed to be, this is therapy. So we need to calm down. It'd be fun, right? Well, this so is I, not how I thought you did it. By looking uh, at the picture you sent me, this is quite inventive. I have to say I'm impressed. Oh, uh, thank you. That means a lot from you. You know, every time I come up with a project and I send it to you, I'm always thinking, okay, now I wonder if Marlon's seen this before. She'll tell me. You're always very nice and very honest. So I know if I'm on the right track to something. So guys, look, see this, I'm using all the same icing for this. And that's so nice. So you don't have to mix multiple bags. You know, a lot of people don't like to mix up all that icing. Can you see how it still has that texture? That's really what I wanted to go with for the glove. But really, while I'm doing the sugar, um, sorry, just don't listen to that. Someone's at the front door. They they must not know we're closed. So uh, if they start pound, uh, pounding really loud, you tell me if you can hear it. <laughs> so the sugar, I'm just gently sprinkling this over. But let me tell you what I did find out when I started putting this class together for my cookie rookies. I really, really have a preference to um i have a preference of using just for visual be, being visually pleasing of using the same color sugar over my icing i don't know why but i just really like that i tried this blue icing over white right and i just didn't really like the look of it it didn't quite look finished to me so this cookie this is wedgewood blue and i'll show you the colors i'm using in case you want to do this exact project this is just americolor wedgewood blue that's one of my favorite colors. So I love this. It's so great. Even at Easter and everything, right? Mm. And, and then this. Under this, silver color. What was it? It's a great color if you're going to paint in silver. Yes. Yes, I think so too. And um, I don't know. I like it. It, uh, it reminds me of a lot of the coloring in the French castles with the uh, Wedgwood blue and the gold. Just that look. I love that look. But see this sparkly sugar? This is a 
a, a very, very light blue. It's not baby blue. It's very close to the Wedgwood. But what's unique about this, really, I can only find this at Christmas. It's by Wilton, but it has mica in it. Oh. So you see that sparkle? So it's super fine, like, um, you know, like powdered sugar or very, very fine sand. And it just gives you this nice look. So then I think I told you last time how addicted I am to using um, sparkle and glitter. So, and I mentioned this company to you, this is from Bakel and it's called Tinker Dust. It's completely um, food safe. It's FDA approved. It's not just non-toxic, but, but it's FDA approved. So I tried this out. I got a sample packet um, from somewhere. I don't even know where it came from, but then I thought, oh, that's so fabulous. So watch this, you guys. Hopefully it won't go up in my camera, but you see the difference. Oh my. Look, look at that. Isn't that fabulous? Like for doing snowflakes, this is exactly what you want to see when you go outside when it's snowing, right? You like shimmery snow. Very it's, nice. it's beautiful. So that is how, how you do the bottom. And this time I did use a little bit thicker icing so I would get more poof because I didn't really like how this flattened out. I thought this was just so beautiful right here. Now, here's the fun part, but I will warn you, it is definitely therapy because you have to be patient. If you've ever used wafer paper on a cookie or a cake, let me just turn this so I can work a little easier here. If you've ever used it, then you know that it um, it curls when it hits something damp, right? So, and again, guys, I'm just doing a basic outline just to um, create my dam line to hold the icing back. It won't really matter with this particular icing. But if you're not perfected on getting your icing to just the right consistency, having that damn line will help you a lot. Um, but wafer paper will curl when it hits the moisture. So what I've done um, is just found a way to use that to my advantage. You guys, this is so easy to do. You're going to be shocked. And this is not a cookie I would do hundreds of to sell in the store. It is a cookie that I would do like in a, in a dozen, I would do one in the dozen, right? So just, you'd have a nice focal, focal cookie, something really fancy. Um, but I think you're going to be shocked at how easy it is to actually create this embossed technique in the Royal icing. And um, I actually ate one of these. I had a couple of friends try these. You don't even really notice that wafer paper on there. I mean, obviously, if you're looking for it, you can. But if you're just eating the cookie, it's it's not obtrusive like some of the larger candy pieces can be. Yes, yes, yes. Right? Well, it's even when you're eating wafer paper alone, it melts in your mouth. Yeah, it just, the kids love it. I did a mermaid birthday cake for a friend's family about two years ago. And I had created um, sculpted mermaid tails out of the wafer paper after airbrushing it. And she said, Amy, the kids went crazy over the paper. And I was like, oh, and it's because they could eat paper, right? They weren't getting in trouble for eating paper. So I'm giving it just a little bit of a shake. You don't need to do a lot. I just want to um, make sure that I'm still just a little bit damp all over the entire cookie because I want the wafer paper to work. But you guys, so easy. You're going to adore this. Once you know how to do this, you'll be doing it often. So you see, this is what it looks like when you just put your snowflakes on top of the cookie, right? And I'm going to show you in just a second. You're going to use your, and I am picking certain snowflakes, okay? But you're going to see when you tap them in, just right, barely attach it to the top. All right? This Can you see that okay? Yeah. You're barely attaching it. And then as I add all of my snowflakes, we'll come back to that top snowflake. So keep your eye on that. It's already occurring where the water is transferring to the paper. Can you see where the tips, see how the tips are beginning to pull up mm -hmm. where it's already happening? The middle, for whatever reason, the middle stays just fine. But those tips will begin to curl as that water hits it. So what you want to do on here is I use three shapes because I wanted to be able to blend these into the cookie really nicely. And I think that if you this works great because it's this white on the Wedgwood blue to make almost this hidden technique that you don't really see. You don't notice it or how you did it rather. Um, if you wanted to do this in other colors, I would look online for that that clear looking wafer paper everybody's talking about right now, because they said they actually, um, it makes great windows when you're building 3d projects. 
Um, it's good for things like that, things that you want to be clear. But my guess is that that clearer way for paper over top of, I'm going to try to do this in frame without getting the bits on my cookie, but I'm going to trim just a little bit off because I want to fill in this area of my cookie. And then I'm going to lower this just a little bit. So you see, I have something in every area of the cookie and I'm just allowing that water to start transferring. Anyway, I bet that clear wafer paper would be fantastic. Can you see what's happening on the tips? How they're pulling? Mm -hmm. So they're starting to pull up. So that means you're just right. And I can't stress enough that you really have to have a good icing consistency. So you just, this is it. This is really, you guys, how easy this is. You just begin to gently tap when that icing is starting to crust. So you really can only do this cookie, one cookie at a time. You can't be working on six, but do you see what's happening? Just that little bit. Can you see what's, how it's sinking in there? Mm -hmm. So look at the difference of just leaving your wafer paper up on top. It really makes that beautiful emboss pattern, just like, just like you're using a stamp or something like that to make that imprint. Now, this is one that's not a finished cookie. I just wanted you to have something for the art of video because I want to show you how this becomes like the finished cookie, right? You see on this one how you can't even tell that I used wafer paper. And I'm going to show you as soon as I get these tucked down in here, I'm going to show you the last super simple step to this. It can be accomplished by dry dusting, or you can use the fast cheater method that I used because I like for things to be fast because I want a lot of bang for the buck. When I find something really pretty like this, I do want to have it available, affordable to my customers. I don't want it to always be a situation of where a cookie just became five or six dollars because I added so much to it, right? I, I love for the kids to get excited about doing cookies. So it has to be things that they can, that make sense to them and that they understand. But look, look what's happening. Because I gave that paper time to absorb some of the moisture, we've just gently eased those down into the icing. I'm going to lift it so you can see it because at this point, you can definitely tell that I have used wafer paper. But in two shakes, you're going to see what I did, and you are not going to be able to tell that I used the wafer paper. But I, I don't know that a non-cookie person would know. You don't think they would know? I don't know that they would know. Have you seen this before? I've never seen in the feed. People are like, eh? So um, let me just do here. Any, anything you want. Look, guys, see? And I still have a little bit of texture to make the glove look rough because of the icing, you can do some more shaking and get it super smooth, but you see? So it looks just like you used a texture mat in glaze, but in glaze, you have to wait the four hours, right? I'm not that patient. I'm patient enough to do this, but I'm not patient enough to wait four hours for the texture mat. So want, want me to show you the last step here? So June is asking about your ideal consistency with regards to this. To make this particular item, I would say that I am using a 20 second icing. It's not quite to toothpaste. So if I give this a shake, I still should get a little more settling. Sorry, I'm leaning on the table. Let me pull back so that doesn't shake too. So do you see how it's glazing? How it's peeling up right there? And then if I really wanted to, um, I can come over here and disturb this icing a little bit and get a little more healing over here. But I did kind of really want the rough texture this time. So this is probably a 20 second. It's definitely not a 15 second. Hey, Katrina. Hey, Darla. I'm glad you guys made it. So do you see how pretty that is, though? And look at how much now I'm about to hide this so that you really see it done. Let me show you these two up close next to each other. And Marlon, can you see it as my camera focusing? Okay. Yes, it's good. So do you see the difference in the finished cookie and the cookie I just worked on? Now watch how simple you guys using this. And I'm sure um, sugar art has a blue glitter that you can use too in the diamond dust. This is just, I don't happen to have diamond dust in blue. I had this one, this soft blue, and I matched it up to my icing. So part of this is making a monochromatic project, right? So um, I'll be cleaning this up for hours, but you all are totally worth it. You know, this stuff is everywhere. 
I especially like going home at Christmas with glitter in my hair from Cookie Projects. So what happens, that icing is still wet. I'm just giving it very gentle bursts. I'm not putting a whole lot in any one area because it settles down. But what that does is it completely coats. Can you see? Yeah. It completely coats that wafer paper so it becomes the same color as your project. Isn't that neat? But you could airbrush. Sure, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. I don't, haven't tried it, though. I think you'd have to wait to airbrush until the whole cookie is dry so you don't introduce too much moisture to the wafer paper. Mm -hmm. But I think this would be gorgeous, especially if you wanted to do a frozen theme and add a little purple to it. I mean, it's it's very clever, I have to say. Thank you. Very and cool. then you could come back and you could dry dust this with some baby blue, but I didn't, I really like glitter and I didn't like how matte finish that made the cookie when I went back in and dry dusted into the different crevices, right? You would just tuck it up into here, but then you lose everything on here, right? So, so you really have to commit to one or the other. Question um, from June, uh, Amy, she, she's using the, I don't use a lot of those pumps. The pump you just use, hers are clogging. Have you had that issue? Do you have a, a I I have not, but I did a lot of reading because I took a lot of my dust and put them. You can see I put this one into a pump myself. It didn't come from them like this. And okay. then I just peeled the sticker off their container to put on here. Okay. Um the re I think that happens because you it's not sealed. So if you're transferring it from the jar into this and this doesn't have a good seal right here, it'll get moisture in there and it will clump. Wow. But I have not had that trouble, but I did some reading online before I bought the pump bottles. Um, I was way too heavy handed with the dust with trying to do it like this or doing it with a brush. I was winding up with real patchy areas. So this was a little easier for me. But mm -hmm. um, there are some videos out there on that. And probably what you need to do, June, is when you buy sprinkles, you can probably solve this problem. When you buy sprinkles, you know how they have those little um, packets in it for food that absorb, absorb the moisture? You can probably salvage that by putting this, dumping this back into a container, putting one of those packets in, sealing it up. Even just press and seal would seal it well. And then go again with the pump. But yeah, this is such, especially this, I, my white diamond dust, I love because it's very fine, but this brand too, it is super, super fine glitter spray. So, so wafer paper. Yes, it's edible. It is, um, for like just a quick, it's like a starch, right? Yeah. But if you're Catholic, it's what they give you the host. Is oh, it Okay. It's that like, it's a, a, a bigger sheet of a, of a host you get at church. <laughs> So, so Sarah you, says, wow, neat. Do you see my mom saying they don't know my middle name is Glitter? That's my mom. Oh. <laughs> and she's right. When we decorate, it's Glitter. Everyone knows what's going on at the shop based on what my online spur of the moment videos look like. Usually I have a line of red glitter here, or stuff in my hair. It's pretty funny around here. See? Olga says, wow. Oh, so is this, this is new. Good, good. So you, so tag us, you guys try to use this. And I will tell you, this is a technique that I'm going to teach more in depth, slower in my Valentine class. So, so. For the, I just want to mention with regards to the, um, those uh, punches. So usually if you go to Michael's, you can use your coupon on those because oh, they yeah. are quite pricey. Here in Canada, I have seen them occasionally at the dollar store. And you oh, I have not. That would be a great find. Yeah, I have uh, I have a few, actually, of the little ones. And I, like this size? Yeah, and I wonder if you could cut, like, let's say, a name out of the wafer paper with your silhouette. Oh. And then push that into, like, have a monogram or have a person's name. Don't. Don't they make those food safe attachment mats now? I haven't used those, but I'm pretty sure they do. Well, the issue with that is I do have one of those food safe mats. And so to adhere the wafer paper to the mat, it's actually Crisco. So you coat it in Crisco and then this can, you know, creates a bit of a, of a tackiness, right? Then you press your, your wafer paper into the Crisco and it's a little amount, right? And then that's what secures it to cut it. So okay. I don't know 
if the Crisco, which is a fat, will then impact the icing, which can't receive fat, right? Crisco will hurt your royal icing. Right, right. So that's where you would potentially run into a problem doing that. Isn't this so neat, though, to get a technique a technique that is in the cake industry and then in glaze icing and be able to take it to Royal. It's very clever. It's a very great, like it's a great idea and uh, it's a lot of possibilities. I mean, there are a lot of, of these punches. So yeah, I can see your brain spinning over there. You've already thought of something, right? Well, no, I'm just saying <laughs> it's, it's, it's because a lot of the stuff has been done, right? So it's hard to be creative in a time when everybody's coming out with stuff. So very, very well done, Amy. Oh, thank you. And I, I am going to test that. Um, I'm going to see if I can get a hold of that clear wafer paper. And I'm going to test that um, with some Valentine things, because I think the same thing done, if you had a pink glitter spray and you had a baby pink icing for Valentine's Day and you had a clear wafer paper on here, you could do some beautiful, beautiful, intricate things for Valentine's Day. The punches that are out for that right now are beyond the basic heart, right? You have you could get even one of those ones that has that fancy edging like you would use in paper crafting to make fancy edges on your envelopes. Yes, yes, yes. You could do some beautiful things with that. I know everybody's making chocolate boxes and things like that right now. Well, I wonder if, um, just to say people who work in chocolate, if you could do that, like pressing it into the chocolate and creating the same kind of effect. You know what I mean? Like embossing your chocolate. Yeah, wouldn't that be fun? I think, I mean, it's if you have the time and the inclination, why not try it? Right, play with that. Oh, I love it. But it was, it's fun and, and it makes the class interesting. And then we did some um, in our class last week and we did some of these cool snowflakes. Very I nice. Guess, I don't know if this is technically considered brush embroidery because I didn't want the brush look. Um, but this, I really love the look of this on snowflakes. It makes them so delicate. It makes such a nice set for January. Well, it's kind of ish. What did you use to do the pull? I, I did use um, my Wilton food safe brushes, but I used um, I used a different tip, and I think that might make all the difference. I used these very stiff, you know, these are stiff and they're rounded. They're not the square. Hmm. So I what I was going for, I tried to pipe it without doing the brush, and I just couldn't get the look I wanted by dragging the the tip of the bag in the icing. Oh. Yeah. So I just went back and did that. And then I got the look that I was after. Very nice. So everybody, if you want to uh, rewatch the live, it's going to be uh, on uh, Amy's page, my Facebook and on YouTube for you guys to rewatch. I didn't mention last time, but if you guys could go and follow the Dessert Network Facebook page, I'm trying yes. to set that up to 10,000 followers. And I'll, uh, I'll drop the link on our page for that too. Well, thank you, Amy. On Friday, I'm going to be on with uh, Amber and Han. And today, uh, Friday, I mean, it's me and Amber that are decorating and Han is manning the controls. I, I did create a prototype. So here it is for... Um, for um, her. Oh, that's beautiful. So again, I my brain is always trying to think of ways to um, just work faster. So there's actually no icing. It's a bear cookie. That is great for people that don't like all the icing though, right? That's perfect. Well, it's not just that. It's just a question also. The, oh, you're not there, Amy. That's I'm going okay. to switch over. I'm going to switch the camera. It's a question of time, right? It's like absolutely faster. So thanks so much. That was awesome. I mean, I'll, I'll put us back far. Don't want to get. I, I don't want to be too too big. Let's see. How's that? Good. Yeah. <laughs> well, thanks, everybody. I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you, uh, and thank you for letting me visit again. This was a lot of fun. Well, it, uh, my, thank you for cut like for agreeing to do it. Thank you. Uh, saying our icing is drying too fast again, Valerie. Valerie, uh, we discussed it a little bit early. Yes, your 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 climate. You might need to simply use a, a runnier icing. And Amber has a recipe. She she uh, says her icing doesn't dry as fast. So maybe you want to buy her icing recipe, Amber of Sweet Ams. Right. She has a different formula, and she says that her icing doesn't dry as quickly. So maybe you could test that if it's really a struggle that you have. 
Right. But that's all I have for you as far as suggestions go. It's probably the moisture if it's going too fast. Well, she's in Arizona. So yeah. that's like you lay the icing down and it's dry. Boom. <laughs> you, you, you make cakes sometimes too, right? So when you're doing buttercream on cakes, it makes a big difference what the humidity level in the store is. Oh, yeah. Yeah, big difference. And when my husband, my husband makes the candy when the storefront is open for people oh, to come in, yeah. which we're not, he makes pralines. That, I mean, once you get it down for pralines, you can handle it for anything, right? I would imagine like sugar, it gets all wonky with the yes. Water, right? Yes, but you know, it's fun to spread out the things that don't set up, right? To give those to other people. And sometimes I scoop them and put them on top of brownies for people. So they like it when things get messed up around here. <laughs> it may not turn out to be what we made it to be, but it always goes to good sugary goodness. Oh, here, just one last thing. See, June is saying she's tried Amber's recipe and she says that it's it, it's true, that it doesn't dry quickly. Yeah. So there. And here, let's finish with Mary Jean saying we're amazing. Thank you so much, Mary Jean. We Mary Jean, we the best. Thank you, everyone. So <laughs> Thanks, we'll guys. On Friday. And Amy, uh, we'll talk for Tuesday. So All bye, right. Everybody. All right. Do you want me to hang out? Yeah. Okay. See you, guys. Bye.